somebody this morning say it was kind of like Christmas Eve for all the uh, political wonks out there. Down in the weeds on it. Big day in the election campaign here in Ontario because it is the leader's debate. And if you're listening to this podcast, chances are you're going to pay attention to the debate. The rest of the world, they just kind of cruise along and then uh, eh, we'll listen to hear what everybody else has to say about it. And that may or may not have an effect on how people vote. But here we are. It's May the 16th. It's a Monday. And this is the Writ Race, the daily version of On the Ledge, the Ontario Politics Podcast. And uh, we'll have the whole team assembled tomorrow, as usual, around the table. And we'll um, sift through the entrails and the tea leaves or whatever it might be to see how the whole thing played out. So, And uh, later tonight, I'll be joining John Wright and Mark Tuohy on Ontario Votes, and you can hear that live on uh, News Talk 1010 after the debate, so we'll be kicking it around. But as we head closer to this election day, or actually it's voting, no, it's election day, because today you can vote, so I guess today could be voting day, which is uh, sort of, an, I'll be curious to see how that uh, played out in terms of the number of people who took advantage of opportunities to vote before election day, June the 2nd. But uh, as we head closer, we're starting to see more and more ads are popping up. Uh, There's more of a, you know, here's what I can do for you discussion going on. There are really obvious lanes where the uh, parties themselves have chosen to plant their flags. Certainly in the case of the Conservatives, Doug Ford and his team thinking that it's going to be all about highways. And that's going to make the difference in terms of getting them over the top in 905. I heard Bonnie Crombie, the mayor of Mississauga, on the radio last week talking about the very specific needs of Mississauga and how they have, you know, some of the key ridings there and uh, the election issues that they are facing and transit, and of course, all of them. But it was also important to note there's a, a, an organization that's uh, going to hold a, uh, I guess we'll call it a town hall because it really isn't a riding by riding debate, but it will be a town hall on the issue specific to the six ridings in Scarborough. And Dave Hardy has been a, a contributor on the program here often and is one of the co-hosts of our very first podcast out of Stu- Story Studio Network, and that would be the next normal. And he and his uh, colleagues have spearheaded this latest effort to raise Scarborough's concerns to sort of the top of the priority list. Thanks for joining us, Dave. It's good to see you. Yeah, good to be back, Dave. So when we talk about, you know, I heard Bonnie Crombie on, for example, and she talked about transit and employment and making sure we had affordable housing and all of those sorts of things. How is it that um, you think that Scarborough has a different script specifically than, than any other place because I know you, you know you have done a lot of advocacy work in making sure that Scarborough gets uh, its fair share and often doesn't. How does that differ from other subsections of the GTA? Yeah, and certainly uh, there are areas of need in the GTA and, and all the rest of Ontario for sure. I think our area of difference is that we're we're so highly multicultural, one of the most multicultural uh, areas in North America actually, and Indeed, when there are uh, refugees and newcomers, they'll often uh, gravitate to Scarborough as a place to start. Uh, So we have that going for us. We've had um, we've really struggled since amalgamation in terms of uh, losing jobs, uh, losing, actually losing higher order transit um, and and just not getting uh, the uh, amount of investment and interest that other parts of the GTA have gotten. So it, it really stands out on the on. The, the racialized communities that are really appealing for help and just the um, the place where we're having to start to get that sort of uh, increased investment and, and attention, actually. So what what is it? And well, I want to get into the the, the the town hall, but what is it is at the heart of that? Because I can see how, you know, Mississauga has a mayor that can stand up and say, hey, look at me over here. Scarborough doesn't have that kind of clout politically, per se, on its own. Yeah, and I'll do respect to Mayor Tory, but um, it, successful municipalities have strong mayors. It's the one uh, voice on council that can talk for all of the residents, and and we don't have that. Um, we we have Mayor Tory, but he's got a, lo- a lot of other uh, 
uh, matters to deal with across uh, the city of Toronto. Uh, we, we have a number of really key issues, and you've seen perhaps the Love Scarborough campaign put on by the hospitals. Um, that's one where uh, paying attention to the fact that if, if I tell folks that if you be careful as you're driving across the 401 uh, through Scarborough, because if you have to get to the hospital through an accident, you're you're going to be in an 80 year old operating room. So that, you know, that's a that's an issue. We've got some funding, but certainly it's not anywhere enough to to rebuild our hospitals. We we're happy to get the higher order transit that uh, with the subway and so on. But it's, it's not nearly enough. The LRT needs to go up to the northeastern parts of Scarborough. And that's where we have some of the poorest people that uh, need, need that transit badly. And the last one I'll point out is that um, while <laughs> we, we have a City of Toronto um, anti-poverty campaign, the result for Scarborough is actually more poverty. And we have some of the poorest people. Um, uh, for example, Ontario Works and comprise uh, 16% of Scarborough's population. And certainly in the northern parts of Scarborough, we have uh, uh, really people who are struggling to, to get jobs uh, and get into the system and, and work their way out of poverty. So, uh, again, we're, we're quite distinct in the GTHA on, that, on those grounds. That's a staggering number. 16% of the population is, is relying on welfare? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Highest level of working poverty in Canada. And, and that's the, the social assistance uh, recipients. Now, does that take into account those who are on ODSP as well? It does, yes. Okay. Uh, so, ODSP in Ontario works. Yeah. So, I mean, when we talk about that, it's interesting to me. I don't know what your read of it was, but how, for whatever reason, in the last 10 days, those programs, uh, uh, the, the welfare program and ODSP, have caught the attention of all four political parties to some degree, to the point to, at which they're all talking about increasing the ODSP benefit. It, and it, the Tories hadn't even included it in their budget. So at some point, I don't know what it, what it is, Dave, but they all determined that this needed to be a political priority before the debate. Well, you know, Dave, it's one area where actually you have uh, left and right coming together. Um, and certainly in the Scarborough Community Renewal Organization that I'm on the board of, we have Canada, or not Canada, we have board members from all parties and so on, but we all agree that there needs to be a, a, a strengthening of, of social assistance and, and so on. Um, and that brings together all the social agencies, even the, the community associations, the employers, everybody sees it. This is something that needs a lot of attention. So, okay, let's dig in on that. You and your group then are getting all set to uh, have your uh, post-debate discussion about the issues. Um, and I know that they're, you know, organizationally just trying to get calendars coordinated is bad enough. But, you know, we noted on the podcast uh, last week that there are groups like yours that are having a hard time getting everybody there, not because they can't fit it in, because they just won't show up. So, for example, we've heard about uh, writing associations holding debates and everybody says yes. And at the last minute, you know, one party member of, from one one member from one party will just say they're not coming. And often it's the conservatives who really don't have a whole lot political. Politically, I get it. They're showing up and, you know, uh, for the fear of being heckled and abused or whatever it might be by people who are concerned about ODSP or whatever it might be. Yeah, it's uh, we, we certainly found that um, we, we when we started off about two months ago to organize this debate, we had um, liberals, liberals, uh, conservatives and NDP that were all set to go. Plus, we we're looking for the other parties to come in as well, so long as they had. Uh, six, um, all six ridings uh, filled with a candidate in Scarborough. But uh, we had the conservative dropout and we were looking for conservative candidates, to, one candidate to speak for all Scarborough issues. We we're seeing over the course of, of uh, last six weeks, that they're, they're all dropping off and, and just not coming forward for the debate. Um, the, the liberals are uh, have Mitzi Hunter, who's come, coming forward, and uh, Dolly Bergen from the, uh, from the NDP. We've also had... Um, uh, was it, uh, sorry, uh, Rain Vega from the New Blue Party, which is quite interesting. They're coming forward as well, and, and our door is open to the Green Party if uh, if they can respond to our calls. So it's been a real challenge, though, and I, I know there's been a lot of debates canceled because they just can't get the candidates, and we've struggled, but we've got enough to form a good uh, spectrum of, of views. This will run uh, live. You're going to run it on YouTube on Wednesday evening. 
That's correct. Uh, it'll start at about 6.30 and go to 8 o'clock. Um, it's uh, if you uh, go to the scro.ca, uh, scro.ca webpage, you can register. Uh, at this point, we're almost filled up for people attending. Uh, so it, it'll be a virtual registration on the YouTube channel. But uh, it looks like uh, we're going to get quite a few people uh, tuning in. And if, um, as in other cases, I, I want to know what's going on, but I can't actually put the time aside on Wednesday evening, will I be able to see the replay? Yeah, it'll all be recorded. There's um, one, uh, I guess, a good thing that's been happening to us is that by focusing on the need to speak to all of Scarborough, like 630,000 people, that's, that's a large number of people. We've been able to uh, get our own YouTube channel up and running. Yeah, we have a group or a, we've had a series of uh of a webinar is called Our Scarborough. Uh, all those speakers will gravitate to the new YouTube channel, so it will be available, and um, and there'll be other activities. So we can't actually can't wait for the municipal debate coming up in the fall. Mm, so. <laughs> yeah, that'll keep you busy. Okay, so get, let's get to the issues here because I think you know you, you've got limited time, and you're going to want to make sure you're hitting the highlights that deal uniquely with the character and quality of life in Scarborough. So are the are there three or four things that you're really going to focus on? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, first of all, back to the hospitals. Um, we need uh, funding for the, uh, complete funding for new hospitals. You can see new hospitals all across the GTHA, but not in Scarborough, and and that's that's um, that's absolutely wrong. So we we need that funding to come forward much more than it is. Um, in terms of the higher order transit, uh, we need that LRT line across Eglinton up to the uh, to Malvern area. Uh, so that that's got to happen. The, uh, we have employment, and this is the province controls the Planning Act, which is really fundamental to a lot of things that are happening on the ground. So we're seeing a lot of the employment areas now being converted to residential areas, uh, all for affordable housing and so on. But at some point you say, well, where are the jobs? And we're particularly anxious about that because our jobs have gone from high end, high paid manufacturing down to retail and, and with uh, some of the online delivery companies active now from retail to no retail. So we're struggling to get where those jobs and the jobs be important to help pull people out of poverty. Um, and of course, we've talked to the ODSP and uh, Ontario Works uh, priorities as well. But we have some really pointed things that we need to see from this government, whatever government's elected. Yeah, and I and I guess that's the that's the challenge. And I, you know, we often trot out Kim Campbell's line of where you know election campaigns aren't the time to be talking about important issues because and I and she, people make fun of her for saying that, but it's because there are so many voices saying, "Hey, look at me. Uh, what's your level of optimism?" Because let's face it, it you know it's not like the liberal liberals of the past were any better than the conservatives of the present in terms of treating the needs of of, uh, of Scarborough. We've seen a decline or a status quo for, for a number of years. What's your level of optimism that at some point this is going to break through and become a political priority at the park? Yeah, it's um, obviously we wouldn't be doing this if we weren't somewhat optimistic that we're going to get our message through. The one thing I think all parties have, have recognized is that, as you know, I've been working at trying to bring the Scarborough community together for seven years now. Um, and I've just, it's a passion for me. I, I think one thing that's worked, uh, not just for me, but my colleagues, is that everybody talks to each other now. Of those 630 people, of the leadership, uh, we have a lot of communications going on. So when it comes to saying this is a definite priority of, of ours, we've got the anchor institutions like the university, the community college, the hospitals, the zoo. Um, they're part of the, the conversation. We've got the faith groups. We've got the multicultural groups. We've got the business association through the Scarborough Business Association, who indeed is one of the sponsors. We've got the Rotary Clubs of 200 professionals. Who are, and then we've got um, this Scarborough Community Renewal Organization, which brings together all sorts of leaders in um, both um, green social service um, and other leaders in the community. So that has, that has happened over a seven-year period. There's a uh, credible amount of information on the ground, on the grassroots that the politicians, I think they kind of get that. So there's where my optimism is. 
Yeah, well, and I guess slow and steady and making sure that the foundation is there. And and then when they're ready to listen to you, you'll be ready to (laughs) shake their hand, you know, right on the dotted line. Yes, absolutely. And and we've we've been really uh, pushing to get specific when they say, well, what do you want? We're well researched. We know exactly what we want. Change this word in the act. Um, um, move this uh, piece of land to do this thing. <laughs> um, change the way this organization or even a crown corporation is structured to help us in this way. So we've got a really good people, a group of people there. Some being uh, formal, uh, former municipal executives, um, both in Toronto and other GTA municipalities are all working with us now as a as a very well informed group. So, it, it's well, great. Dave, uh, thanks to you for the the work, and I know that you're quite literally doing some of this stuff off and off the side of your desk while you've got you know other work to get done, right? <laughs> <laughs> to keep things going, but uh, it's a great example of of community building. So I'm anxious to see how things play out Wednesday night at um, at the town hall meeting. Dave Hardy is the president of Hardy Stevenson and Associates. And uh, you can check out their website if you want to engage and register for the uh, event on Wednesday evening. Starts at 6.30. You can catch it on YouTube. It's at S-C-R-O, right, dot C-A. Is that, I got it right? You got it, yeah. All right. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. If only, you know, it, it, what I love about this is that this literally is grassroots community building. And it's interesting to hear Dave say this because I was talking to the folks at the Toronto Region Board of Trade recently. And Lindsay Broadhead and I were having a discussion pr- just prior to the election on this podcast. And she said the things we learned was that we were able to bring groups together who up until now really hadn't talked to each other. It's not because they didn't like each other. It's just that that's not how we had done business. COVID created this environment where it made sense for various interests to talk to one another, and now they're getting results. So Dave Hardy and company out in Scarborough doing exactly that. So if you want to check it out, I would encourage you to do so, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll present some of that on the podcast on Thursday so that you can get a sense of what those issues sound like and how they played out. All right, that'll do it. Election Leaders Debate is uh, coming up tonight. Join us on the radio at 920 with Mark Tui at News Talk 1010. And then the whole On the Ledge panel will be back at it again for the RIT race tomorrow. And we'll uh, find out what John and Sabrina and Leslie thought of the debate the morning after. We'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.